Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Louis D'Souza here. Today is Monday, February the 4th, 2019. It is 8 a.m. in New York, 5 a.m. in Los Angeles, 1 p.m. in London and Sydney, Australia. It's 12 midnight, or yeah, 12 midnight. No, 12, what, do I have it wrong? Yes, 12 midnight, that's right. I get confused sometimes. That's okay. It, it's, it's the beginning of the week. I'm allowed to be confused for a moment. Anyway, thank you for joining us for another uh, edition of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And we are starting the week off with uh, an interesting little project that Louis had us do for the week. And I'm going to be curious to see uh, what anyone might have come up with who is listening to the live stream today. But I have to say, Louis, I, the dog did not eat my homework. I actually got mine done. I, I, like I said <laughs> before the show, I, I kind of cheated a little bit because I went to one great source. But nevertheless, I did my homework, so I'm ready for you. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I'm glad so, to hear. Well, how are you doing? I mean, it has been a good weekend, a good week for you? Ah, fantastic. Thanks. It was my daughter's birthday, so well, we oh. had a, a real festive weekend, and uh, I had family around, and... It was, it was a lot, a lot of fun. I really enjoy having family around. That's great. That's really good. Yeah, that's how you know you're having a good time when you're feeling good and having a good time. Straightforward, really. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any news to report. There's nothing really new going on. Um, I mean, is there anything new? You're in. If not, if there's nothing really new going on, say so let's just go right into the topic because we usually do the chit chat. But I don't know if anything to chit chat about this morning, so let's just go for it. <laughs> uh, chit chat. Um, yeah, it, it was fun watching my my daughter have sleepovers with her friends here at home, and <laughs> oh, and, and, and the noise and the and the fun that they're all having. It was, it's just really exciting to yeah. to look at that young energy coming in and. And, and the lack of resistance and the just the bar all Aren't over the place. Yeah. That? I mean, kids are just so, they're, they're so blatantly, bluntly honest about how they're feeling. And when they're feeling good, it just flows right out of them. It's wonderful. Mm, mm, mm. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, especially my, my three-year-old. She's a, she's a live wire. <laughs> she's <really> expressive, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> So it's interesting how when she does get frustrated or angry, it never lasts long. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which is uh, a good really, thing. That's very good. It's a great thing to watch. Yeah. It's, yeah, a, it's a good absolutely. example of what we should be doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, okay. so, so I did my homework. So, so what do I do with my homework? I, I've got it. Okay. I've got my homework done, but what do I do with it? I don't know what to do. Well, here. if you got it wrong, I'm going to give you... Um, uh, we, we, we're going to give you some corporal punishment. <laughs> <No>! <laughs> Bend over. <laughs> uh, it was quite interesting because when I was at school, we, corporal punishment was all the rage. And um, um, I, I was very thankful for it. I was very grateful for it because writing 5,000 lines of I should not um, <laughs> did my head in and a, and, and a little bit of a smack on my bum very quickly. Was uh, <laughs> what did that? Nice. What exactly did that accomplish? That's what I'm trying to figure out. That was actually on the good side. Well, just just that the 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 um the the punishment was swift. Ah, that's that all was... it accomplished. <laughs> long, long, long and painful writing things about what I don't want, or um, you know, I must not. Do this, 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 mm -hmm. this, this, five thousand yes. times, and just in my head, in so five thousand uh, ways to say the same thing over and over again about how your responsibility is to please someone else. Yes, 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 yes. yes. So well, that pretty much summarizes it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we were talking a lot about this weekend to to my brother. I was talking about um, how how people who who tell you that you're selfish, just want you to do things their way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, it, was, it was really getting to the core of all that. It was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I, I, I become, I've become very, very interested in the last year or two about just how, I mean, I, I've been interested in this word for a long time, since my 20s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've been, I've been particularly interested in the last year or two about just how hypocritical the usage of the word selfish usually is. Yes. In that. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, pe the people who use the word selfish invariably will claim that they are not acting selfishly. Yes. And that, and that they're acting in the interest of anything else except for themselves. 
and yet they're the ones who are most selfish in the entire formula. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> uh, I was just so struck by that. Mm. The whole thing is anyway. really, really weird. Yes. So, so what do you want to do? What give me a quote. Do? Give me a quote, Walt. Give me a quote. Oh, all right. Well, I can give you a quote. That's easy enough. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, by the way, Siraj says thank you for suggesting the silent flute. He said, it was "Yeah, awesome. great movie." I count my my crown chakra is activated now after seeing the movie. He says. Now, I'd love I'd, I'd I'd love to have you on live so we can chat. So right, um, what's stopping you? What's stopping you? I'd just love to know. Because yeah. I want to know what it's like to have your crown chakra open. What does it mean to you? <laughs> that, that would interest me. Okay. That would be a good topic. Well, while he's, um, he's going to do that, I'll give you my first meme. This is Now, I, I, I did say that I went to a great source, and the great source is Joel Elston, who probably publishes about a half dozen to a dozen memes every day. So whenever memes. I need it. What, what does the word meme mean? What does mean, 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 mean? Uh, it, it mean it, it memes <laughs> <laughs> memes. <laughs> no, as far as I know, a meme is a a quote of some kind that is usually associated with a graphic that gets passed around on social media. Ah, is that what a meme is? Wow, yeah. I'm enlightened. Ha <laughs> ha, thank you. <laughs> so anyway, this one is a quote from a woman named Virginia Satir. She says, "Life is not the way it is supposed to be. It is the way it is. The way you cope with it is what makes the difference." Mm -hmm. Okay. So w when I'm looking at quotes, th there's a few things I wanted to just start off and mention about them. Okay. One is they're often around for a feel-good factor. Yes. Okay. Um, another one is they, they generally have bits and pieces of the puzzle, but never the whole picture. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> Okay, um, which are great in whetting, whetting the appetite, but um, also incomplete, as in satisfying the whole. Um, the other aspect is when I'm looking at a quote, I'm looking at an aspect of is it focused on what it wants more than it is focused on what it doesn't want? Mm, yeah. Okay. So the, the, those are some of the criteria and things that I look at. And then I break it down based on the law of attraction and my understanding of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then I, I talk about how I find it. So let's go through it step by step. You want to just do the first line again, Walt? So the first line is, life is not the way it is supposed to be. Okay, that's focused on what you don't want, yep. Yeah. Right. Second line, it is the way it is. It is the way it is, yeah. Present is what it is, and if you focus on it, you get more of it, yeah. And then the way you cope with it is what makes the difference. So coping with it is focused really on what you don't want or want. It depends how you look at it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not painting a clear picture of where you want to go. Like it's, hinting no. at it. it's, hint it's hinting at it, but it's, yeah. not, it's not quite saying... Don't focus on the, the, your reality, because if you do, you're just going to get more of it. And unless it's a great reality, then you can focus on it. But if it's not a great reality, you really don't want to be spending much time focusing on where you're at. But you really want to be focusing where you're going. So, yeah, looking, looking at that, um, Louis, uh, thumbs up or thumbs down on that <laughs> quote, I would say it's, it's like about a... <laughs> 40, 40, 44 and 60 against. Okay. All right. Jeff, next. <laughs> uh, well, actually, we've got one from Sarah, and it's a very simple one. Yeah. Be happy with nothing, and you'll be happy with everything. Um, okay. So the, the big thing about this quote is its simplisticness, which doesn't fill in the whole picture. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's completely accurate. All right, but it doesn't satisfy me because it's incomplete. It doesn't say why or how. Com completeness is is an interesting point because a meme is making a single point. I, I can't ever recall having uh, a meme shown to me or presented to me that had multiple points in it. So it's always about one point. 
And, and the reason I say that's interesting is when we discuss topics, we don't rely on just one point. We try to explore the various points so that we can understand the entire picture. Yeah, so a yeah. bean can actually never give you a large enough piece of the picture. It's got to show you a little tiny piece of it. Well, you'll be quite interested in all the Abram Hicks memes if you start having a look at them. A lot of them are damn okay. long. <laughs> well, yes, they are. And, and they're, <laughs> really they are long. The to the rule. They are definitely the exception of the rule. Because I said the rule is there's usually only one point. Yes. They're usually making about five or six. Yeah. In about uh, you know a paragraph and a half, so <laughs> you're right. And, and, it's quite and, and I like that about them. I really do. Um, yeah, it, it, they're they're usually quite complete. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons why I didn't ask for one of them is because I really will say a hundred percent of the time, except maybe for somebody who shortened it too short. Okay, yeah. which means it's incomplete yeah. again. Um, right. But mo most the Abram Hicks quotes, or, or the official ones that come from Esther every day, um, are are pretty lengthy and 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 very 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 accurate. So um, I haven't been able to pull apart anything in the Abram Hicks teaching yet. So you know, maybe one day I'll be able to see something that I, clearly that I don't like about it. But um, <laughs> uh, it, it, it is a little it's, unnerving, isn't it? I mean, because we're so used is. to having stuff to pick from. Like, well, I kind of like this part, but I don't really like that part. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> right? It's really, it's a bit disconcerting about any teaching have being that accurate all the yeah. time. For 35 like, what, what years, continuously, with not one something? word that they've said that <laughs> you disagree with, it's sort of really scary. Absolutely. Once you get what they're saying, I mean, in the beginning, you could quite easily you know, rip them to pieces because of mm -hmm. your lack of understanding of where they're coming from. Well, exactly. Um, yeah. Exactly. But once you get it, you, you kind of, you, you kind of corralled into their, their way of thinking. You don't, because it is so correct, accurate, logical, et cetera. Um, yeah, should we go into the next one? Yeah, uh, we've got a couple of them here, one from Sarah and one from Siraj. And let me just copy Siraj's while I read to you Sarah's. Sarah says, sometimes what you're most afraid of doing is Hi, the very Sarah, thing. Siraj and Nasha and everybody, everybody else. <laughs> Absolutely. Sometimes what you're most afraid of doing is the very thing that will set you free. Run that by me again. I'm going to ask you maybe to repeat quotes again and again. That, that's right. Sometimes what you're most afraid of doing is the very thing that will set you free. Hmm. 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 So it's so incomplete. I want to puke. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> I, I, so, I just want to thank you for for basically insulting <laughs> Sarah with the quote that you brought to us. Ah. <laughs> uh. Sarah, every subject to subject, you can take it for what, what I'm saying as a, an insult, or you can take it as a as an expansion of clarity. Okay, <laughs> please take the latter. <laughs> Might want to change the thing about puking, but other than that, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. You There's certain quotes that. like that that really get my goat up. <laughs> Let's repeat it so we can go through it. <laughs> Okay, so you want me to read it again. It says, sometimes what you're most afraid of doing hmm. is, is the very thing that will set you free. Okay, so if, if you, you've just stumbled across, across this quote, okay, I really, really, really hate public speaking. It's gonna set me free? God, no ways. I'm gonna rather run away and hide. Okay. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's not encouraging me to understand the logic that Abram Hicks teaches. I mean, it, it's, they, they're trying to point to this. They're trying to point to when you know what you don't want, you have a better idea what you do want. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's what this is trying to point to. Right. All right. But it's it's not getting there for me. It's not. It's not. It's not. It, 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 I don't know. A lot of people kind of think those things are cute, but it just really annoys me. <laughs> so there's not there's not much else to say about it. It, it. It's really trying to get to the clarity of when you know what you don't want, you have a better idea what you do want. So once you once you've cracked the nut of public speaking, which is not going to happen overnight, yeah, and you've got out there, you've gone to Toastmasters like I did, and and you practiced, and you started talking about yourself as you do first in Toastmasters. Um, which is a relatively easy subject, um, and then you move on to you know doing um, talks about uh, certain subjects, and then you do talks about um, talks talks with with 
uh, accessories like um, a projector um, and, and, and a clicker and all those kind of things and, and um, PowerPoint presentations. And then you go on to, you know, how you talk to a crowd, etc. And then after a year or two, <clears throat> you pop out with your little certificate, I'm a Toastmaster like I've got. And um, you, you, you know, I've seen the, the, the transformation of many of the guys that came there. Um, I needed to, to discipline myself and to polish myself up. I was never scared. That was never one of my fears as public speaking. Um, so it was really, really interesting to watch how the transformation of many people was in the public speaking to go from what they didn't want all the way through to, you know, a, quite a competent speaker. And it, it's fantastic and it's beautiful to watch. So yes, it is a true saying, um, but it, it's not clear. It's, it's a lack of clarity in these short quotes that really really get to me. Okay, so let's go. The objection here is really about the shortness of the quote because it, does, it isn't giving a lot of yes. description. Yes, yes. Okay, well, I, I can I, understand that. Because I, I also can, I, I can read that quote and I can fill in the blank. And actually, that's kind of what I think uh, memes are about. They're about allowing the person, encouraging to the fill person in the blanks. To, mm -hmm. to fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. Knowing that each person is going to fill in the blanks a little bit differently. Dif differently, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, that's actually the good part of, a, of what a meme does. Um, yeah, is it is it something that could be a little bit more clear? Yeah, it could be more clear, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm I'm going to give it more points than you do, I think, because. <laughs> you know, I, I and you know, know, Walt, I love that because we're all different. <laughs> <laughs> we are all different. We are. I'm 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 I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little harsh. I really want things clear. That is my real focus in life. I want simplicity. I want clarity. Um, I want everything to have the base well, philosophy. The, 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 I do too. Uh, I just think I'm the one who has yeah. to make it clear. I, I don't yeah. expect somebody else to clarify for me. So I, when I read something I, like I, that, I completely what appreciate what can I do to make that saying. clear? And and for me, making that clear is pretty simple, because yeah. I can think of many loca many locations, yeah, many situations where I have been trying to get myself past point X, where point X is some point of resistance, some kind of a block, some kind of yeah. Of something that that for whatever reason is stopping me, and I'm trying to find a way around it, or through it, or over it, or whatever. And that's when it's most uh, useful for me to remember that yeah, I may be afraid of it, but that's where I'm going to be able to have my breakthrough. Mm -hmm. That's what I that's what I think of when I read that. So for me, I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, Quilt. Have have quotes ever given you a breakthrough? I'm the one who gives myself the breakthrough. What quotes do for me is a good one will help me to feel more confident to follow through and have the breakthrough. So have any quotes helped you follow through to get the breakthrough? That's not what I said. What I said is they will help me feel okay. better about it so I can, have, I can follow through and have the breakthrough. The okay. question is, does do, it help do, you feel Do you better? think any quotes have been instrumental, and maybe you have to rephrase it, in, in, in uh, Getting the momentum up to help you break through something. It, to the extent that they help me feel better, yes. But only to that extent. That's what the point of a quote is, I think. A meme. Mm -hmm. a, the point of a meme is to help me feel better. Mm -hmm. Because like Abraham teaches us, when we feel better, that's when we're able to do our best attracting. And we're the ones doing the, track, the attracting. Mm. So once we get to feel better, everything else we're doing ourselves. It's, it's us. And it's not doing in the sense of necessarily of going out and doing something, it's an internal doing. But we're mm. the ones who are doing it, you know? Mm. Uh, a, a quote is, is simply a way of, of helping us to get started. Just let's, just let's just start with this process of feeling better and then getting to the point where we can do the thing we want to do next. Mm -hmm. So I've been looking at them wrong all my life. <laughs> no, 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 I, I really, really, really like what you're saying there. Um, and to be honest, I, I, I I think maybe I, I look for too much in a quote. I look I look for more than it's it's meant to give. You you look yeah. for what you need to look for. <clears throat> yeah. So let's go to the next one. Let's let's chat about that. All right. Uh, this is from let's see who gave me this one. Siraj gave me this one. Positive energy to your thoughts gives positive results. Negative energy to your thoughts gives negative results. Good. That that's pointing in in, in directions which I really like, which is very core. And the core thought is thoughts create your reality. Mm -hmm. Now, that is, to me, absolute prime. So I really like that. And I've really liked um, 
uh, what, what he, the, the quotes that I've seen him put on the, on the Facebook group and the clarity with which he's presented many, many replies to a lot of the questions there. So um, <clears throat> uh, what he's trying to say, again, from a law of attraction point of view, which is very, very accurate, is when you focus on what you don't want, you amplify it. When you focus on what you do want, you amplify right. it. Um, really like that. It's, a, it's very short and it's very succinct and it's very accurate. So, um, you know, you can have short ones that are already accurate. Um, so that one gives me like a 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 feeling. Okay, for me. Actually, what, that, not that you mentioned it, one of my favorite quotes of all is three yeah. words long. Huh. It's from Mike Dooley. Thoughts become things. Yeah, fantastic. Mm. I love that one. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what did your Ford guy say? He said something, a lovely quote. Uh, Henry Ford? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, I know which one you're thinking of. Yeah, it's oh, very popular. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, somebody will come up with it. Don't worry. We'll move on. <laughs> whether you think you, something like whether you think you can or you think you can't, either can't. way. You're right. Yes. Right. Yeah, something along yeah, that line. Yeah, yeah. If you think you can or if you think you can't, you're right. Yeah. Exactly. Something like that. Yeah. And I love that one. It's very, very accurate. It's true. It's very true. Yeah. The, only thing, the only thing I'm not 100% sure of is whether Henry Ford actually said it. But oh, yeah. That. That's another, that, that, you know, if he stole it or not, that's another point. <laughs> He's been blamed for it, put it that way. <laughs> that's the difficult thing. I mean, half the th I've learned now, if I see a quote that I like, I have to go look it up and see, is it true? Did somebody actually say that, the way, the, the way it was quoted, or did somebody mm -hmm. make it up? Like, there, there was one really great, great quote that came out a few years back. Um, it was about government. Government is not reason. Government is not eloquence. It is force. And like fire, it is a dangerous servant and a fearful master. It was attributed to George Washington. And it was attributed to him in his second inaugural address. Mm -hmm. Problem is, he never said it. And if you look at the second inaugural address, it's not in there. <laughs> but <laughs> other than that, it's good fun. <laughs> oh, he's uh... <laughs> Spinners, eh? They love spinning. Oh, yes. It was actually created by the person who attributed it to him in a book of quotes this person put together at the turn of the 20th century. But, you know, other than that, it was a good quote. <laughs> <laughs> Stop being afraid of what would go wrong and start being excited about what could go, I imagine, right. Mm. Yeah. 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 That's a good yeah, one. Okay. So you'll see a lot of quotes talk about the contrast. Um, and, and, and that's that's cool. Now, I should like get the, the correct version of that Ford quote. If you think you can or, or can't, either way you are right. I believe that is the Yeah, word. brilliant. Thanks, Nasha. That's it. That's good. How about you? What's your favorite quote? Do you have any good ones? Uh, illusions. <laughs> oh, I love those. those are Argue great. for your limitations and they're yours. It's yours. <laughs> <laughs> and it's That's true. That's probably my single most um, short appreciative quote. Of course, there ought to be a way to turn that into a positive. How do you turn that one into something more positive? That's well, let's argue. think about that. That's a good question. So, argue for your limitations and they're yours. So, argue for your expectations and they're yours that's that's better i like that yeah yeah that's now, very good. why why we we find the negative side of it quite appealing is because humanity's mostly there oh yeah okay i'll give for your limitations and they're yours is so appropriate for so many people so much of the time but oh, i'll give okay. for you for your expectations and they are there is not necessarily that um, often that I could you know, use that one succinctly and, and, and quickly and easily in the society. So <clears throat> you will find the benefit. Get, the benefit is that it makes you, it stops you and makes you think. So many of the yes. memes we react to is like, oh yes, yes, that, I, I resonate to that one because I'm so used to the negative. But then we throw yeah. something really positive at ourselves and we think, let's see, is there a trap in here? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so, you know, do I have to pay a price for this? <laughs> How many lashes of that cat and nine tails do I need? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> we are a suspicious lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, until until Abram pointed out with quite a lot of clarity how you can have your cake and eat it, it, it wasn't 
wasn't necessarily something that uh, that uh, I believed in at all. What changed? Don't forget you're human. It's okay to have a meltdown. Just don't unpack and live there. Cry it out and then refocus where you were headed. Okay. So I really don't enjoy the statement, you know, to err is human, uh, don't forget you're human, um, you know, it, it kind of, it, it's kind of saying, um, you don't really have to focus on what you want, where you're going, you know, you're just human, you're going to make blunders and it's always going to be wrong or it's often going to be wrong. Or... It, it's kind of like a bit of an excuse in my mind to, to often put that saying, you know, we're human, we're human, to err is human. So uh, not, not hugely fond of that. I can see where it's going. It's not a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, it's okay to have a meltdown. Yeah, so it's okay to know what you don't want. It's, it's, that's a very important point. You know, mm -hmm. it's really, really cool, clear. Um, just don't unpack and live there. So when you know what you don't want, don't stay there. Good, I like it. Mm -hmm. um, then refocus on where you're headed. Perfect. So uh, I really like that quote. It's, it's really digging into know what you don't want, know where you're going. So which is the basics to the physical experience. So just just to go back to <clears throat> my, my my epiphany that I had was. I always understood as a kid that the contrast in the physical universe was your teacher. So I knew that, you know, without light, there'd be no darkness, without a, a valley, there'd be no mountain, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, but I never knew how it transferred into a human. Nobody explained to me with simplicity and clarity what the contrast looks like in a human experience until Abram Hicks said, when you know what you don't want, you have a better idea what you do want. And that, to me, was an absolute utter epiphany of how the contrast manifests in a human's life. Yeah. And I never saw that before. It was a complete blank in my life. I did not see that. I might have had some kind of picture of it, but not with that kind of clarity. It was very, That's very true for a lot of Abraham. I would say probably 70, 80% <clears throat> of Abraham has that kind of quality for me of mm. filling in blanks and, and looking at things in ways I'd never looked at before and mm. realizing that it was all true and being blown away by it. How did I miss that? <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it, it's scarily, scar scary in its simplicity. And then on one side, it's, it's really understandable why your emotions or your guidance would be hidden from the masses. Mm. It makes yeah. complete sense to me. But, um, uh, Anthony uh, and Astrid, you know Astrid, so um, Jinjin Jitsu, yep. uh, sister-in-law. So, so Anthony and Astrid were, were here ye yesterday, and um, we, we were having a chat, and we were all getting excited about going on um, maybe the Alaskan cruise or, or one of the uh, cruises of the Abram Hicks thing. So uh, it, it, it really felt good to chat about and talk about it and see how much it, it, it would be to get there and all the, you know, starting to look at the logistics of it all, which is really, right. really a lot of fun. Mm. That's nice. Very good. Now, about the fact that uh, so many of these memes do have that negative twist to it. I can't remember the one that we uh, repeated a, a little while ago. Uh, oh, I know what it was. Argue for your limitations, and they're yours. And, and we turned it into argue for your expectations, and they're yours. Yeah. And I like that one. I, I, I still think there ought to be another one that feels even better than that one. I don't know why I think that, because nothing's coming to mind. Mm. But... I have been, in a sense, I've been retraining myself. To so the word more... argue, replacing that word, I think. Focus yeah, on your, on your expectations. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's good. That's a good improvement. Um, but, but I've been noticing that the more that I notice, the more that I pay attention and look for positives and notice how few of them there are, the more I really want them. I, yes. I become quite hungry yes. for them. You know yes, what I mean? Yes, 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 absolutely. So, what what what's happening? Uh, the the Abram Hicks teaching teaches is that as you rise up your general vibration, as it rises up the emotional scale, it becomes very painful to f to feel the old emotions, because it's clearer and stronger when you when you're having those negative emotions, 
um, what actually is happening, and it's not like just in a in a dull fuzz negative emotion. Now it's it's absolutely whoa no I remember that one I don't like that it's really really painful mm -hmm. don't want to go there anymore. So you start focusing on finding more and more and more words um, that you can use that are really positive that are really clear that are really higher on the vibration scale for you. Yeah. And everybody's at a slightly different scale, so it's, right. it's very important for me to really appreciate every individual. Um, for how far they've expanded, because any individual, no matter who they are, where they are at any moment in time, thinks they have the biggest picture they've ever had. Yep. And that needs to be respected. Sure. Okay. And it's not right or wrong. It's, I mean, it is right for them. Um, but the, the the thing that I enjoy is those individuals who who are happy to expand just a bit more, expand a bit more. There's some that really want to stay where they are, but there's some that want to expand a bit more. And if they're staying where they are, they're arguing to stay where they are, all right? Often they're discussing concepts of what they believe is right and wrong, okay, which which re really helps um, expand. Um, so I've just, just got a, a message on Facebook from Daisy Jopling, who's, the, who, who's quite a famous... Um, um, individual who who says she's she says, sounds amazing that you'll come on the podcast and talk with us, and she's become very successful and she she attributes it to the law of attraction and and the Abram teaching. So I'm quite excited okay. to to get her on. I might be able to get her on on next Monday. So yeah, that'd be great. Um, um, yeah, she's done very very well for herself. <clears throat> uh, living in New York and um, comes from the UK. Okay. Um, so. Yeah. To that. So yeah, that that that, that to me is um, quite exciting. So, what's another one of your favorite quotes from uh, um, Illusions? From Illusions? Oh, um, <laughs> but it, I'm not sure if it's my favorite, but it's perspective. It's it stuck with me. It, it, it stuck. Well, that's a good one. Yeah. No, the one that really stuck with me was everything in this book may be wrong. Yes, I love that one. <laughs> and I'd like to say that at the end of every podcast, everything I say may be wrong. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, when I read it, it really pissed me off. Like, oh, oh come on, you know, just just sell out your entire set of ideas here. That's what it felt like when I first read it. Oh, he's giving you the opportunity of endless expansion. <laughs> so the gift of that statement is. I Actually, you've been using the word expansion a few times, and it's – yeah. create a question in my mind and I, I think I know what my answer is but I'm curious to know what yours is mm. Abraham talks about expansion a lot mm. um, it's a key concept in their overall um, model of how life works is contraction ever a part of the equation yes when you know what you don't want you're contracting so contraction is actually something that happens quite a bit. Which is very, very key and the tool we use for expansion. That's the, con, uh, the, the contradiction which makes sense when you understand it. So in other you words... You really, really, really have been told that you can't speak to other men and you've got to stay in your room and um, <clears throat> you can't go out and you can't do this and uh, if you do speak to other people you get beaten and all those kind of things then you really know what you do want don't you <laughs> yeah, then you have a very good idea what you do want <laughs> you start getting clearer and clearer and clearer what you do want yeah, you probably want to take, take a stick to the person who wants to beat you but i understand your point <laughs> That, that's What's going up the emotional it? scale. <laughs> it is slightly, but it's higher. <laughs> not recommending you stay there. Not, not recommended, no. Not recommended. But, but you yeah. need to go through that, maybe. Yes. So, so, so contraction actually becomes the basis for massive expansion is where I was going with it. Yeah, massive contraction goes into massive expansion, yeah. Kind of like uh, building up the, the power of something by squeezing it down and just letting it go, boom, and explode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, um, uh, another another one in illusions is you want to know if your mission on Earth is complete. If you're alive, it isn't. Yes, right. Yeah, mm. I'd forgotten that was illusions. Yeah, yeah, that that is an illusions quote. Reluctant Messiah. Mm. 
<laughs> I love that phrase too. It's not really a quote, but it's a good phrase, a reluctant messiah. <laughs> it, it doesn't it isn't a complete thought for me and it isn't it, it isn't further enough along the path so to speak but at the time that i first read that it was it was a phrase that made me feel better mm. because i was still fairly inundated by church and that was like one of the ways that i felt better about moving away from church mm. because when i was moving away from it i was, I was the only one I knew of nobody else who was. And that's a fairly lonely place to be. And when you're in that lonely place, so, you're looking for something to kind of reinforce, like, yes, I am on the right track here. Hmm. I mean, yeah, inside it, I keep feeling it's on the right track, but everybody I know outside is saying, no, 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 no. So, well, from a law of attraction point of view, why do you feel you were the only person doing it? Because in my experience, I was the only one I was seeing who was doing it. What I'm saying, the universal law of attraction brings you what you are putting out. So you... Oh, yeah. You, you, oh, you mean why did I come you, to that conclusion in the first place? Why, why, why weren't there more people that were around you that were also leaving their religion is what I'm trying to ask, okay? Because the law of attraction brings cooperative components and things that are similar. Yeah, well, I, for one, I didn't understand how the law of attraction... I never heard the term law of attraction at that point in my life. It, it doesn't matter. The law of attraction was still working, yeah. Oh, it was, but I had never even heard of the concept by by label or by description. I had never heard of it. The closest I'd ever heard of was biblical teaching, and the way the biblical teaching was presented was so distorted that I couldn't have got there anyway. So, I mean, mm. it was really outside of my experience to understand like attracts like. I mean, that, that was just, it wasn't there. I had nothing mm. that was feeding me that at all. Um, so uh, how did I end up with, with that particular thought process? Because I believed it. I mean, because I I had everybody I knew was in a box, in a in thought a box, box. Yeah, yeah. They were in a thought box, and in that thought box, none of them were were growing, none of them were improving. They were all just repeating the same things over and over again, and what they were saying was wrong. And that's mm. everybody I knew. So I expected that that's the way it was always going to be. And of course, my ex expectation proved me right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But I had but, no idea my expectation had anything to do with it. What, what I was pointing out, Walt, is that your vibration, the universal law of attraction, would have been acting on exactly what you were vibrating, yeah? So you were vibrating more about the religion than about the clarity of somebody who was very much leaving it. Okay, if you were in the vicinity of the clarity of somebody who was really leaving it, you would have drawn more of those people to you. And that happened to you, I'm guessing, later on down the line, when your vibration was more clear, then you bumped into more people who who were of a clearer vibration of thinking about things that were outside religion, talking about them and experiencing them, and you bumped into the law of attraction, etc. <clears throat> yeah, that was, that was a good 30 years later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So sometimes your vibration does take quite a while to to yeah. actually out, output what you want coming back. Because it's a and actually a lot of lines of what we're talking about here. Beth Ann is asking a question of you. She's saying, this is my question because I've been very anti-church for about eight years, and I really have only one person, my husband, who is with me on this. That's her question, so to speak. She didn't really actually ask a question with a question mark on it, but she's asking about that. Well, so what, what, what I'm that. finding, what I'm finding with the law of attraction group and the law of attraction people is there are many, many out there that are on the fringe of looking to transition from a orthodox religion to something else. Mm. Okay, it's massive, and it's a very difficult transition. The group, which is just thought you've thought often of. Mm the religion is, is really, really, really powerful, okay? I mean, it took me years and years and years to um, drop the hold Christianity Catholicism had on me. Mm. And, and it, it wasn't that Catholicism had on me, it's what I had on myself based on sure. my thought processes of what I thought was the way it was. Yeah. So, um, it, it's not Christianity's fault. It's my w where my thoughts were fault. And now I have so much respect and time for 
anybody who wants to belong to anything or believe anything. I rarely have so much time for anybody who wants to 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 be in Christianity and 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 be happy in it. Mm. Who wants to be in Islam and wants to be happy in it? Who wants to be in Buddhism and be happy in it? The, the mainstream religion. So, um, it's now now I'm now now I'm not looking at. Um, I'm not looking at the point of view of which religion are you. Now I'm looking at the point of view of how aligned are you. Mm. And you can be aligned in any of those religions or just leaving the religion, or you can be aligned in following the law of attraction focusedly like I'm enjoying with the Abraham Hicks teachings. Um, so, you know, my, my appreciation now is for everybody, no matter what step they are. So, uh, you know, I'd love to talk more about that, although it's a very beautiful topic, the whole the whole process of leaving a religion, all the implications of it, um, the focusing on new beliefs and bringing them into your life and activating them um, and moving forward and moving forward and moving forward. So yeah, all of that is beautiful to me. It's, it's stuff I could talk about forever. So yeah. Beth, Beth Ann gave us more uh, input about what it was she was asking. She says, my question was the question that you asked me, Louis, um, that, which is why isn't it that the law of attraction brings more people to you that are of the same mindset? In this because case, you're not a vibrational match. That's a simple answer. That was what I was trying to say to Will. And it yeah. can take years for you to actually output what you what you actually think you want. Um, you know, right. but you're not you're not believing it. You you're, you're saying I want to leave the religion, but you're pushing against what you don't want, which means you're activating it. Okay. What, so that doesn't work. What does work nicely is if you say, okay. Um, I'm really going to take this Abraham Hicks teachings. I'm not going to think about anything that I've ever thought of or believed before. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to focus on it, and I'm going to run with it. And I'm not going to look back. I'm not going to look back. I'm just going to look forward. I'm just going to look forward. Okay, but it's not easy. People want to dig up the past. They want to dig up what they used to believe and compare it with where they're going, and um, and and that activates all the um, the vibrations that are all over the place, which are going backwards and yeah, forwards. Yeah, She's recognizing that too, because she followed up by saying, maybe saying I am anti-church isn't a good way to word it. Exactly. So that's exactly. Path, right? that's, that's exactly it. Yeah. Exactly it. And and if you listen to my wording, I'm saying how much I appreciate and enjoy anybody who chooses to remain and do whatever they want to do, means mm. I'm at peace with it. So therefore, I'm not pushing against it. Therefore, I'm not activating it. Therefore, I don't have a, a mixed vibration. I don't have a confused vibration about the whole thing. Therefore, it's not holding me back. And I like that. I mean, the, earlier yeah. we were talking about fault. And you know who's at fault, and and one of the key concepts to learn as we're making this kind of transition is to recognize fault has nothing to do with it. It, it does. The fault is you and your thinking. No, nah, <laughs> there is no. That's that's my point right there. You are yeah. making my point beautifully. That yeah. the moment that we we start holding ourselves accountable in terms of finding fault with ourselves is the yeah. moment we're being hard on ourselves, and that's the wrong thing to do. What we need to do is be easy on ourselves. We need to, to let go of all that angst, and the only way to let go of it is to stop beating ourselves up. So you know, I spend a crazy. lot of time, Walt, a lot of time saying to people, why is it important to be negative? Mm. And until you really appreciate that it is your expansion tool, that you really understand how it morphs from what you don't want into what you want, um, we're not taught. We're taught to push against negativity and depression and and yeah. rage and angst and frustration. We, we, we're not taught to see it as an expansion tool. We're just not. It's, it's not part of our upbringing. And yeah. once people get that, and it's not that easy, okay, and it took me a while. So um, is, 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 is the, uh, the amount of appreciation I now have for going through the negative experiences that I have on a daily basis, guys. <laughs> um, hey, it, it doesn't both. stop. It doesn't <laughs> stop. It never stops. No, it doesn't. No, it's okay <laughs> and if it stops, if you want to know if your mission on Earth is complete, if you're alive, it isn't, okay? When you're in the contrasting universe, it will remain. You will still, on the cross, when you're about to be crucified, you'll say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, okay? <laughs> right? You will do that. You will do that. You will still go through negativity no matter how advanced you've become because you're still expanding. You're still expanding. Out of that statement Christ made on the cross came a huge expansion. And, and so it goes on and on and on. And so it is for all of us. I hope that answered the question. <laughs> any, more, <laughs> any more quotes? Any more quotes? 
Uh, well, actually, there, there have been a couple of quotes. Beth Ann is still typing out her questions, so I'm curious to see how it's going to. Oh, yeah, cool. No stand. problem. She's, she's partway through, so I'll, I'll come back to it later on. Um, yeah, the saddest thing about betrayal is that it never comes from enemies. It comes from those you trust the most. That comes. No, 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 nobody, nobody wants to take uh, credit for that quote. Yeah, I, I don't know that one, but it does, it, it has a, a, a nice victimhood to it. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> it comes from those you trust most. Now, who's the ones you trust most? <laughs> it actually comes from yourself, so, oh my God, it does come from those closest to you. <laughs> But when I see, when I see quotes like that, I just, what? Does that help anybody? Well, it, the, the, when I, when it I see that word, betrayal, want, that betrayal word tells me that the person is focused on the betrayal. You know, yeah. why I trusted this person and they betrayed me, right? That, and, and, and I'm so let down by it. Their behavior let me down so, so deeply and so badly and so You know strong. what I love about betrayal, Walt? What is betrayal doing? What, what, is, what, is the, what is the gift of betrayal? I give up, Louis. What is the gift of betrayal? <laughs> <laughs> Come, Walt, I thought you knew everything. <laughs> no, not at all. I'm still trying to figure out what the questions are. <laughs> so betrayal is teaching you not to need anything outside yourself to remain happy. Oh, okay. You see? How beautiful is that? When they betray That's you, true. they say, don't look outside at me for your alignment. Remain aligned for no reason at all. Take me out of the equation. I am that giving you a beautiful meme, example. That, 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 that little thing that you said there about betrayal, that, that would make a nice little meme. Yeah. That'd be a good one. Start writing memes. Write them down. Quotes by Louis. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, here we go. Beth Ann has given us a, a nice long one. Well, first I'll, I'll say what Siraj gave us because it's short. He says, my therapist told me, write a letter to the people you hate and burn them. Did that. Mm. But, but now I don't know what to do with the letters. <laughs> what? <laughs> You've got so many of them, have you? <laughs> uh, I, I think you may have skipped a step there, Siraj. You're supposed to burn them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Siraj, think think about that for for, for a second. <laughs> what are they asking you to do? Are they asking you to focus on what you want or what you don't want? Hmm. Okay, they're asking you to focus on what you don't want, and when you focus on it, you amplify it. When you amplify it, the universal law of attraction grabs hold of it and brings you more. Helpful or not? Depends uh, what no. so you're focused on the negative or the uh, positive. No. Whether you're focused on the wants or don't wants. <laughs> okay, if, if they put the clause in, don't spend more than 14 seconds on writing that letter or thinking about it. then they might have got somewhere and then focus on what you want. <laughs> that, the rocket of desire that comes out of what, you know, when somebody harms you, it wouldn't it be nice if people were nicer to me is the rocket of desire. Mm. Or if I was horrible to people, wouldn't it be nice if I was nicer to people? So mm. don't, 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 don't go around asking for forgiveness. Don't spend time in that, no value. The value is they've already given you the value. The value is you know what you don't want. Now follow the rocket. That's the value. And if you're following that, you're giving back not only to that person, but to the whole world. Mm -hmm. But I'm not one to, 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 to jump on the bandwagon of going asking for forgiveness. No, always Abram by the looks of it. <laughs> uh, something else occurred to me too while you were uh, discussing that, which is there, there is a certain quality or often lack of quality that I look for in a meme. And the lack of quality is when I see something being given as advice. And the, the wanted quality is when people express what is meaningful to them. Mm. And the reason that's important to me is I find most often that most advice was not asked for and is wrong half the time. 
So I, I really don't want to hear more advice. <laughs> what I want is to hear what has worked for people. So if, if somebody says- Now that you know, could be advice. Quote, quote, well, not necessarily. It depends how it's expressed. If they express depends it as- how it's this taken. Is, this, is, this is what I found. Uh -huh. When I hear this is what I found, to me, that's something I'm much more interested in paying attention to. The moment I hear somebody say, do this or do that, is the moment that I kind of shrink back and saying, yeah. Oh, okay. I can feel that, Walt. Believe me, I see that all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> your back hairs go up and your claws come out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, uh, do I really want to pay attention to this one? <laughs> Not so sure. <laughs> That's what, so anyway, Beth Ann gave us her... That's what I enjoy about you. <laughs> <laughs> Beth Ann gave us a, a very long description of her question. She says, um, I kept hitting the, uh, the send by accident, so uh, here's what I wanted. I, I would like clarity on this. I've always felt bullied in workplaces. I need to work. We all need money, I suppose. I work for an agency as a nurse, so I do get to pick and choose my assignments mostly, but... I always seem to go to places where people are mean and bullies. I want mm -hmm. to stop extracting this. I've been told to love them anyway, but this is so difficult. What do we have to tell Beth Ann? Well, Beth Ann, number one, my wife's a nurse. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so my, my wife at, at work is called a witch. Oof. Called a witch because whatever she focuses her attention on, she manifests, and they think it's a bit freaky. Um, and that's what you're displaying here, Beth. You're manifesting what you're thinking. So you're 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 a bit of a witch too. So we all are. <laughs> we can't help it because the universal law of attraction will attract to us what we're thinking. You're saying to yourself, you, you've got that active vibration. Um, I always go to places that have bullies or something mm. to that effect okay so the universal law of attraction feels that because you feel it quite strongly um, and, and and it just brings back more of what you want so you might go to different jobs different places different faces but you take yourself with you so right you take the I'm I'm I'm, I'm a vibrational match to the bully with you and off you go and you go to the new places and, and of course the act of vibration will bring the person who's maybe not even a bully very much of the time, almost none of the time, will start being a bully around you because you're the act of vibration and, and they feel it and they're just playing the game that you're asking them to play um, and they come to you and they're a bit angry, frustrated or, or, or want to lash out and then when the other person who's in a very aligned vibration next to you, they go to them, they, they'll react to them completely differently. and when you start seeing that clearly in your work, how somebody, you know, you might not have somebody who's too aligned at work, but, um, you know, if you do, you, you will see that they, they never seem to get any shit from anybody. I just don't. I mean, nobody gives me shit. Nobody. I mean, hasn't done for years and years and years and years. I haven't had nightmares for years and years and years and years. All, all these things start going. They just vanish. They just... It just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. Only Walt gives me troubles, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that I provide that. Play you that try. <laughs> you try. And if I allow you to, you will. <laughs> if, if I'm a vibrational match. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so it, it's very important to understand um, that, that you are doing this to yourself. Uh, very brutal, some people would say. And you can't say that to people. But I, I just give people the truth straight up. Um, it's simple. It's the way it is. Um, and And... You, you can't jump to, I'm always going to have nice people in a happy place. Jump to, wouldn't it be nice if I sometimes had less, uh, a, a nicer environment to go to? W wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice? Just write that down and, and, and start getting into the feel that, you know, this is something I can believe. I can really believe that I can start manifesting a few more places that are just a bit nicer, just a bit nicer, just a bit nicer. I, I, I'm sure I can manifest that. It's not, it's not a big stretch, not a big jump. It's, it's just gen generally negative, and, and I can go there, and I can feel vibrationally comfortable with that statement. Mm -hmm. And then you build up, and when you're spending a little time in that, it'll be easier to jump to, hmm, wouldn't it be nice if um, it often happened now? Because it's mm -hmm. happening quite often, but it, it can happen a little more often, and I'm sure of that. And, and uh, you know, I understand the universal law of attraction, so the more I get into a happy place before I go to work, and I don't worry about anything, and I just let things unfold, because I know my vibration's gonna manage, unfold it in any case when I'm, when I'm doing 
And then um, I'll, I'll go and do that. But um, I think the hour is up because something's beeping. No, it's not. Um, and, and then you'll start going to generally positive. So generally positive would look like, ah, oh, you know, now um, I, I've had some great, great times with some great people, and, and I'm really going to focus on, on, on those. Um, they call them bank. Bank, uh, when you get different nursing jobs at different places, they call it the bank staff. So um, when, when I get different bank jobs at different places, and, and, and you know it's been working quite well now, and, and I can really see that happening more often now. Uh, and then you, you move up to, to the place where it's not even an issue. I always get nice places, I always get nice people, and everything always works out for me. And I know that now with clarity. And, and you start living it and feeling it, and it really feels good. So, you know, it's, like, it's so cool. It's like... I don't know why I ever had the problem with that in the first place. <laughs> well, I especially like the last sentence that she wrote. She says, I've been told to, quote, love them anyway, unquote, but this is so difficult. And that actually fits the topic. She was a little worried this was not really part fitting our topic, but I think it actually does, because I've seen memes that say something to the effect of love them anyway. And I think it's a flawed meme. I think what the meme should say, or would be better saying perhaps, is, um, I've been told to love what I would like them to be anyway. I would, I would change, the, change it to how do I want that person to behave toward me? How do I want that person to be? What, what, what kind of person am I looking for? So it's not love who they are right now. I don't have to love who they are right now the way they are. How about loving them the way I would like them to be? How about changing in my mind what kind of behavior pattern I can expect from them? Well, do you, do you know what I see is the flawed premise here? Okay. Okay. The flawed premise is, and it's with a lot of quotes, okay? I, you're over here negative, and I want you to go over here. Love them. I hate them, but I lo love them, okay? So the distance between here and here is too far. It's not necessarily inaccurate. It's accurate once you've built up that vibrational scale. And it, it's also not true because when you're happy, you're going to draw the happy people to you. So you're not even going to get them. So it's not like you're changing them or you're loving the horrible people. It's you're nice, and so now they, that you're attracting the nice people, and game over. You're not pushing them away, and you're not loving them or anything. It's just that you're now a loving, nice person to your whole self and to the universal law of attraction and its feeling and then it's just bringing back the loving nice people to you so uh, yeah i agree with you it's not something i'd focus on loving them it's 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 not the way it works the way it works is you change yourself and then the appropriate people at the appropriate timing happens so mm -hmm. um, yeah, when so you cool understand the law of attraction when you understand that it's like oh my gosh okay all right i really do create my own reality that's what it's mm -hmm. saying to me and i right. I, I'm really going to focus on where I'm going, not where I am. I'm going to focus where I'm going. I'm, I know where I am. I'm not, I'm not even going to look at it. I, I know where I'm going. I'm going to be just a little more positive, a little, a little more focused on, on, on going generally negative. Going, wouldn't it be nice if more people were nicer to me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Simple. Yeah. When, when, uh, whenever there's somebody in my life who is behaving toward me in a way I don't like. This is like my go-to place. What way would I prefer? Not mm. with the expectation necessarily that by thinking that I will change them, but rather with the expectation that if I focus on what I would prefer instead of what I've been getting, one of two things will happen. Or maybe mm -hmm. actually both of them could actually happen. One possibility is that that other person will be influenced by my more positive thought and decide to behave more positively toward me, which is great. That would be wonderful. I would like that. Mm -hmm. But even if they don't, just by focusing on what it is that I do want, what, what, on, uh, you know, what behavior am I looking for instead, just by focusing on that, I will, like you said, attract more people like that. And if this particular person who isn't treating me the way I want to be treated and is, doesn't match up with this new vibration I'm putting out, they'll just go away. So mm. either way, I win. Either yeah. they modify their behavior and they stick around, mm -hmm. or they don't modify their behavior and go away, and I get other people who do match the behavior I'm looking for. That's win, win, win. I mean, I've taken so many times people, and I've, I've talked to them about their terrible bosses, and I've said to them, find something you love about them. And if they can do that, if they have been able to do that, 
they said, I just can't believe it. The guy's responding to me yeah. so completely different. I just don't mm -hmm. understand it. How, 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 did, how did that happen? Yeah. And I said to them, what were your thoughts about them? Oh, I started thinking more positive things. I liked the tie. I liked the smile. I liked, you know, the fact that, um, you know, they were kind to another person or, you know, they started finding something they liked and they just started focusing on that and only on that and only on that and only on that and left the rest out. Right. And then you're not a vibrational match and they can't access your space. I keep on trying to explain to people that the law of attraction, when it's used correctly, when you're outputting positivity, you can't get negativity come through that shield. It's like a force field. It is. And it's the negative force field that works exactly the same way. When you're negative, that force field only allows in the negative. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Exactly. Right. So, if you understand it, you, you you have the ability to create your reality with your own force field and protect yourself from everything and anything by not protecting yourself by just focusing on what you want by being clear by being it. by putting out to the universal law of attraction the positivity and it'll just bring it back. And part of it's understanding it, and part of it's remembering it, especially when you're in that negative place. Remembering, oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. That's yeah. how I shield myself. Yeah, I remember. Well, this this is funny. Jennifer, my mentor, once said to me. Um, but Louis, you need to practice, 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 practice. I sense the theme here. Practice, 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 practice. She went on for half an hour. I said, "Okay, John, got it. I 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 got it." Shut up. It was a great experience for me. I really enjoyed that. It really helped shift shift something in me. It was really good one. Absolutely. Well, this has been. We, we finally actually did use up the hour, but this has been very good. Good topic. I like the idea of going over memes like this. It's given us uh, yeah. some interesting perspective on this. So thank you for bringing that up, and thank you to our listeners as well. And we will see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, Have a great one. <laughs>